Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Ted Turner. Success leaves clues, kids. I just named five of the greatest names in business in the last 150 years. And they all have one thing in common. They're ball busters. They're hard as nails. Where does that leave you? I still work 50, 60 hours a week. And I haven't had to work in 35 years. You're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to sacrifice anything to be a high performance person. I don't want to be like that. No, no, most people don't. I want to be liked. Yeah, well, see, you want to fit in. I don't, I'm the only speaker that you're ever going to hear that really, with all his heart, doesn't give a shit. If I leave here you liking me, I did something wrong. Line. It's just reality is built methodically, and overnight success you would never guess takes a long time. You have to cut lifelines and navigate landmines, but it's your move on your cue, just decide. So I sat there, thought about it. How long am I gonna go on about it? Put my shoes on, I said so long, and went outside. Right through the field I used to run by, where the rows of sunflowers waist high, but it was different than what I envisioned. There weren't any road signs, or guidelines, or letters that said it's all just fine. It was just me adjusting as I made my way to the sunrise. Then I paused. On the ground below me was a little door. I knocked slowly, was pretty scared, maybe ill prepared, but we get one life, one life only. So I opened the hatch, looked down, and it's pitch black, no sound. And if you don't choose any road, we'll do. I've been riding logistical merry-go-rounds, and my eyes are wide, restless soul. Scores to settle from years ago. I know that there's more because I told me so. I'm going down the rabbit hole and there's not a way out. The chips fall, I'm all in. Now my prospects are in lockstep and each step is a shake down. I got a coat of armor, sword of steel, call to arms because the threat's real. And sit downs are made on battlefields. So, Your Majesty, no, I will never kneel. Time to face fear right front center. Watch dials fall like it's November. Got a treasure map in my backpack. It says life's golden. What a pleasure. Been round and round and free falling now because there's ghosts. Schools and there's goblins out. They are leaving us. They call me treasonous. Think that you're dangerous. You must be delirious. Just send the guns fire and the trumpets start and the ground trembles from the steady march. And it looks bad because they're deck stacked. But my king beats a queen of hearts. They're trying to win in spades with so set fires with the kind of flames of forge empires. And like a hurricane, but I'm a tad insane. Cat five, Shire Right around we go. The next episode under the second story. So look out below. Collect haters' tears. It makes a steady flow. And the greatest fear is I told you so. I know it though. There's no impossible. You can watch a past. You can watch it go Be more powerful than you will ever know I'm going down the rabbit hole Be the kind of trader Who sees the big picture The world is changing around you Global threats push gold The safe haven asset To higher prices each and every day Now's your chance To start trading gold Just go to capex.com And register to get up to a $5,000 bonus on your first deposit. Simply use GOLD5000 as a promo code and you're good to go. CapEx.com proudly welcomes you to the next level trading experience. Register now and start taking full advantage of the new gold rush. Terms and conditions apply. Exposure to gold obtained via contracts for difference, which are leveraged products and incur a high level of risk. CapEx.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY LTD, an authorized financial services provider. The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here!
Good afternoon and welcome to Bull Market Stock Show. This is your host, Rian Option, and we're doing today the second wave. And I'm sure you guys are sick and tired of COVID, or most of you guys are sick and tired of the whole story of COVID. Um, now we're expecting a second wave in South Africa, and the second wave already erupted in uh, in Europe, or I would say in the Northern Hemisphere, um, where there's a sharp increase in cases um, of COVID, especially in Germany, and France, and Italy, and Spain. And Spain actually went into a, a hard lockdown that where, it got, where they actually entered a state of emergency. The U.S., with the most cases, actually are still opening, and uh, Trump also persuaded the people to actually get used to used to COVID and actually live their life, which I think personally it is the best best way to combat this whole COVID story. Now, other parts of the world are not so lucky. At least there's a president there that they can think um, in the United States. I can just imagine if Joe Biden are taking over uh, in the United States, everybody will go in a panic because the guy is an absolute an idiot. He's absolutely useless. Um, and um, and he's talking that he has a plan and blah, blah, blah. It looks like this, vi this virus will go away. It will definitely not go away. Um, so I don't know what plan he, he ar arranged. Maybe he's going to catch the thing in a bag or something. But it's just, it's just all lies that is, that is Joe Biden been talking. And obviously the media is not exposing his lies, but it's just a whole bunch of nonsense. But in South Africa, the problem, problem that we are facing here is that the politicians love the idea of the dictatorships, uh, of the dictatorship of this new second wave. Every single day you just hear about the second wave. But funny enough, South Africa reported yesterday about 891 cases, 891 cases, and these guys are saying that there's a second wave coming. We expected a second wave 10 days when we went into lockdown level one. We are still under lockdown South Africa with 881 cases. South Africa averaged about 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 cases per day. Uh, people, uh, we averaged about 40, 40, 40 deaths um, per day. Um, it's actually equivalent to the amount of taxis um, to the amount of taxi death. Um, in South Africa, we have minibus taxis, and t taxi drivers kill more people than actually COVID. So you could have just as well create a, a lockdown for the taxis and not for the people. Um, it just, it's just ridiculous what is actually going on in South Africa. Um, the president was making a statement yesterday where someone else was actually making a statement um, saying that she was talking to the president. And he said if, if the virus spreads again, that he will go again into lockdown five to save lives. That, that, uh, he will ruin lives if he do that. He already ruined a lot of South Africans' lives. Over 2.2 million people lost their jobs. And, and these idiots just can't think. They, they, they just can't think. But not just in South Africa. The story is also in Europe and United Kingdom. The United Kingdom also experienced in the second wave. Um, and, and the other part is, is that the stock market actually went down also yesterday quite, quite, quite drastically. Um, the Dow was at some stage down with 800 points. Um, even the, the European stocks went down. And this morning, the Asian stocks also went down because of the, of the ripple effect of what happens in the United States. Obviously, when the United States excuse me, go down, then, then normally it spreads over to the to the Asian countries. But the Asian market actually just not so aggressively. It went slightly down, um, but um, not so bad. Uh, the Nikkei was down by a negative 0.04%. The Shanghai 50 was down by a 0.3%. Also on the other side, when there's so much risk around, the US dollar normally goes up as its safe haven status. So the dollar went up. But there's also other reasons also is because of the of the whole um, stimulus package story that looks like it is just a dead end. Now, I did warn you guys about that, that it will become a dead story because that Mnuchin and Pelosi were still fighting over, over debt relief for for different states. So the whole stimulus package will not come. That that I can guarantee you, it will not come. I did tell you Friday on Friday or fr on Thursday last week that they will not come to an agreement over the weekend. And and that actually happened. Now the market didn't move as what I expected. I expected the more sharper, uh, 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 a more sharper. Uh, downside on the market because of the whole um, stimulus package and also the fear what people normally get from COVID. The media is all over the COVID story. As Donald Trump is also saying, we the politicians will go on this COVID train until 
the, the elections in the United States. In South Africa, it's COVID, 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 but we're only sitting with 891 new cases that was reported yesterday. The day before, it was, I think it was 1,005, but it's, it's very flat. Uh, comparison to where we hit about 14,000 cases, about 15,000 cases per day in June. But that is what we all expect. In the summer, in the winter, it, we, most people will get their flu and all of those things. And in the summer, then the, the virus will come down. That is what we all expect. I'm sure next week, uh, next year, winter, the story will, will start again, maybe here by autumn, April or so. Then the COVID cases will increase again. The virus will not get away. And people can't lock themselves up for a vaccine. And I don't understand this whole vaccine story. It just doesn't make sense to me. But the market do react to this COVID stories. But there's one thing that I did pick up. Is the market really moving on COVID? Or is the market also have the fatigue regarding COVID? Because even with the cases increase in Europe, I don't see much movement there. I think yesterday's downside went down because of the stimulus, stimulus package, yes. I don't think it went down on the basis of COVID. That I actually did not see. I think the market went down on the stimulus package, yes, but not on COVID because the market is actually concentrating on something totally different than what the, the news is actually trying to inject fear with people. I will just take a short break and then I will break it down for you. The whole COVID story and this second wave in South Africa and across the world. The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! is not this um, wonderful, esoteric, elusive, uh, godlike feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. Yeah. Period. I came from the bottom, but I'm coming to the top. Let's test testing your will. How much faith do you got? Your foot's on the line. Will you ever take a shot to score the game when it points when it's zeros to clock? I've came to find that life's a test. There's no cheating either. Just work is stress. If no money's provided, you're eating less. Bills on the table and pain in your chest. You promise you'll pay for the things that you can't. You want the whole world, but it's burning in your hands. You're asking for help. No one hits you when it stands. A crowd full of friends you can never call fam. They love you then, but they don't love you now. Your whole life seems to be crashing down. You never feel safe when there's no one around. Still feel like giving up, you gotta stay in your ground. No one else can ever try to tell you otherwise. So stop trying to be just like the mother guys Fake the haters who live in this see you feeling like And fuck the coaches who judge it cause it's shape of size If you ever wanna make it, you gotta show effort and show dedication And crave it like basically nothing else matters But getting that paper and that education, just take it from me I ain't doing this shit, the rap with a mouthful of gold teeth That'll show the whole world that my chain ain't so Just let the world know I'm an OG No, I do this for my fam, for my city, and for me Cause honestly, I throw a middle finger up to those who don't So if you want it, get it, don't ever give up, you got it You wanna make it and chase it, no one can stop you, stop you, they're gonna hate you, hate you, but let them hate you, this fine, cause if they stand in your way, then you gotta leave them behind, but if you want it, get it, don't ever give up, you got it, you wanna make it, then chase it, no one can stop you, stop you, they're gonna hate you, hate you, but let them hate you, this fine, cause if they stand in your way, then you gotta leave them behind. People will always try to bring you down, but that's a part of life. Imaginary action when they see your name up in the lights. Ignore the gossip and nonsense you're hearing on the daily. Cause if it gets to your head, then you'll only end up failing. Just be the best that you can. Only those who love you will be there in the end. Stick with those in your defense and leave alone your phony friends. Stay on track, don't fall behind. Either chase your goals or fall in line. Bullshit is only a waste of your time, so go with your gut and stay on your grind. I wanna wake up the world. Someone 
Girls gotta hear my message. This is food for your thought. Take it, it's easy ingestion. I won't leave you in question. Just the lasting impression. I'm trying to speak the truth. So take heed to my lessons. This is honestly the most honest things I've said in a while. In life, you'll always be judged. Eternal circles of trials. Just keep your head up and never, ever fall to denial. You're finally on the clock. Meaning your time is when you want it. Get it, don't ever give up. You got it. You want to make it then chase it no one can stop you stop you they're gonna hate you hate you but let them hate you that's fine cause if they stand in your way then you gotta leave them behind but if you want it get it don't ever give up you got it you want to make it then chase it no one can stop you stop you they're gonna hate you hate you but let them hate you that's fine cause if they stand in your way then you gotta leave them behind then you gotta leave them behind be the kind of trader who sees the big picture the world is changing around you. Global Threads push gold, the safe haven asset, to higher prices each and every day. Now's your chance to start trading gold. Just go to capex.com and register to get up to a $5,000 bonus on your first deposit. Simply use gold5000 as a promo code and you're good to go. capex.com proudly welcomes you to the next level trading experience. Register now and start taking full advantage of the new gold rush. Terms and conditions apply. Exposure to gold obtained via contracts for difference, which are leveraged products and incur a high level of risk. Capex.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY LTD, an authorized financial services provider. Good afternoon and welcome to Bull Market Stock Show. This is your host, Ryan Opson, and we're doing the second wave that is um, on the news every single time in South Africa and also, I'm sure, in, in Europe or basically in the whole entire Northern Hemisphere. But, excuse me, just to actually to highlight you, there's a big event that happens today in South Africa, which is actually the, the mini budget that will be announced by the finance minister today. Now, as I explained the last time, um, it was postponed. Um, due to, I don't know, something, but the finance minister was asking for some time so that he can actually do the, 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 the mini budget. I think it's because the president uh, unveiled the, the stimulus package of $100 billion with infrastructure and also talking about um, um, that he was going to extend the unemployment grants to people. And I think the finance minister did not get that. Um, or, or, or they were talking in different languages. The president was talking one thing and the finance minister didn't maybe approve it or something. But but all of a sudden, after the president made the, the, those announcement, announcements that he will extend the unemployment grant for, for people, um, then the finance minister was putting some brakes on. But there is some serious issues um, that he needs to address. That is now all the SOEs or the state-owned entities enterprises in South Africa that is basically bankrupt from our electricity provider to the railways to our arms manufacturers which is the Nell post office it, it is an absolute mess I mean the state is so useless in South Africa that they ran actually a diamond diamond company uh, where they actually uh, can dig up uh, uh, diamonds or a diamond mining company they actually ran it bankrupt Th that is actually how useless these these people are in our government. But somehow they just dish out food parcels and then people fall in love with them again. And voila, that is. Or there's some old shit story that comes up from apartheid and all of those things. And then <laughs> apartheid, apartheid. And then the the bloody bastards win again. It's really it's, it's really a, a piss off story that is currently happening in South Africa. But the finance minister will address the nation there. And I'm sure there will be some fireworks coming from the president because the fiscus is bone dry. There's no money. The biggest supply of money is basically debt. That's it. We ex I expected, I, I, I'm actually expecting that it will come with a surprise with the, with the debt 
uh, uh, um, to GDP, I think it will definitely be over 80%. I will never be surprised if it's about 87% of, of, of GDP. And the problem is what he said the last time. We borrowed money from the IMF. But then they went to pay out salaries with a bloated government, useless people that are sitting in the government, a massive government that South Africa is currently carrying, or the taxpayers actually currently carrying, and they do absolutely nothing. From the president to the minister of sport, he just ruins sport as well. It's just an absolute mess in South Africa. But but he will come with some, he, he needs to pull a rabbit out of the hat today because everybody will be tuning in because definitely we will pay more taxes. I'm definitely sure we will pay more VAT. Something we're going to pay more, definitely. And, um, and, and we will get those surprises definitely today because the fiscus is absolutely bone, bone dry. Now, th please do tune in. I'm just not sure what will be the time. But um, he will make the mini budget speech today, and I'm sure, I hope he starts with the IMF loan, because obviously we all know it went for salaries, but as they say also, 60% of the IMF loan, or the money that we borrowed, disappeared. 60% of the money disappeared. Uh, the, the, the IMF might literally send some police here and, uh, and arrest these criminals, because they were literally taking money. <clears throat> Sorry, they are literally taking money from the vulnerable and um, during this whole pandemic, they said the virus is so deadly and, and, and basically they're just eating the people's money up. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous what's going on in South Africa. Um, but with the whole COVID thingy and the second wave, for me, I think the market is, is, is literally uh, understanding the whole uh, COVID story and I see the market is not paying attention um, to the second wave um, because the second wave's numbers or the cases in the second wave is far higher than actually in March. It's far higher. If you look from the United States, it, it broke records there with the new infections. In Europe, records. But I think, I think personally, the market is not paying attention anymore. Because if, if we reverse back the time to March, March and April, where the numbers are increased drastically... The economies went into hard lockdown and the economies literally stand still. Governments were panicking and that is where the market went to a steep sell-off. I think this time around, the market understand the whole COVID story and they literally don't pay attention because the numbers, the new infection rates are far higher and the market is not panicking. The governments are not panicking as well. And I think the market is relying on that and that's why the market is also not panicking. Because I did expect a second wave and a steep sell-off. But that is not the case. The market just went down yesterday because of the stimulus package. But I don't think personally it is to do with the second wave. Because the market do understand. There's not dumb people in the market. In the, in the, in the forex market or stock market and all of, those, uh, all of those things. I think the market is well prepared for this, for the second wave. And they don't pay attention in this new infections because one thing that i picked up that the market i think what the market is concentrating on is actually the death rates that is what what is the difference here the infection rates can increase look i don't understand how these politicians think the infection rates can increase that is not the problem people will get sick whether it's from covid whether it's from flu or whatever virus people always get sick that is the one thing so it's not something new People will get sick, whether it's COVID or anything else. So it's not something new. The thing is, what I do pick up is, even though the new cases increase, the death rates don't increase. If I can go, if 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 I need to mention a few countries, and I, and I selected a few, and I see it's a very consistent part with the death rates, even though the new infection rates increases. But obviously because winter, obviously people are getting sick in Europe. Now in Germany in particular, there was about 8,685 new cases. In some states it was about 9,000 cases. But the death rate is 24. 24, 20, 16, and some, in some, uh, some instances it was uh, single digits. So the death rate is very consistent. If you look, if you shift the two, if you look at the infection rate, you can see it, it's climbing. But the death rates is going nowhere. The death rates are f very flat 
um, uh, in Germany. In France, it's the same story. Like in France, there was 26,000 new cases. There was actually a death rate of 270, uh, sorry, 257. That was now reported yesterday. But if you look at this, the, the, the curve of the death rate, it's fairly flat. A slight increase in France. Look, come just, people always say, yeah, but people are dying. People always die. That is the whole thing. It's just a pity they go, they die of COVID. But if you look at influenza all across the world, people die of that and there is, there is even a vaccine. But if you look at the, at, the, at the success rate in Germany, success rate in Germany is 99%. 99%. So if you get, a, if you get sick of, of COVID, your success rate for survival is 99%. So, why the hell panic? In France, 98%. That is success rate if you get infected with COVID. In the United States, for that matter, it's 98% the success rate. So, there's about 59,691 new cases in the United States. Yesterday, 300 and 339 people died. If you look at the population of the United States, a massive, about over 350 million people in the United States. So, which means the death rate there, the, the, the success rate is extremely high, 98%. So, they did tremendous, even without a vaccine. That's why I don't understand why people are, are wanting this vaccine. Because the treatments that is today available in the United States, Germany, and France is working perfectly fine. In Sweden, the same thing. The infection rates increased with 1,000. The death rate was 1. 1. So why is this media punting the story of COVID? If the de that is the most important thing, the death rate, not the infection rate. Everybody getting infected with something, whether it's flu, TB, whatever. The main thing is, if the person get infected with whatever virus, what is the treatment and what is the success rate of treatment? The treatment is 99%, even in South Africa, even in South Africa. The success rate in South Africa is 90% and we are a developed country. More people die in taxi, taxi, in, uh, uh, taxi accidents in South Africa and murder, violent crimes. People die more violent crimes than actual COVID in South Africa. In South Africa, there's 55, 55 people die per day in South Africa of murder, murdering rate in South Africa. Murder, like murder, is 55 per day. COVID cases average about 40, 35, like that. I mean, you need to lock down the economy rather for taxes or for the criminals, but not for COVID. And you know what? Our, 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 our police minister in South Africa is chasing literally the virus. He's closing down a club, a, a, a club over the weekend because they were uh, bro uh, breaking the protocols of the curfew. He's chasing the virus and not the bloody criminals. That is what he needs to chase, the criminals. But he's chasing the bloody virus, trying to prevent the virus from spreading. How the hell can you prevent something that you bloody can't see? Ay, ay, ay. You know, uh, th these politicians and the media, that's why, I, that's why I'm doing podcasting. Because of the media. The media is picking sides. That I can tell you now. They have their side that they want to choose, or they get forced to choose it, but I think they chose they, 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 they choose their path, is to go rather with the government and play it safe, or whatever the case may be. Or they get manipulated into it and all that. But honestly speaking, whether, whether you're in the United States, whether, whether you are here, nothing is absolutely true. Everybody's talking about the infection rate that's increasing. What about the success rate and the death rate? That is what I'm worried about. People get infected. What is the treatment? Does it work? That is what I'm concerned on. The death rate. Not about the infections. Everybody get infected with anything. What is the success rate? That is what we need to focus on. On the other side, in the UK, there was 20,000 to 20, yeah, to say about 21,000 people that got infected. The death rate was 102. Flat. Flat. Absolutely flat. In Spain, that went into a hard lockdown. 20,000 new cases, 231 actually passed away. Success rate in Spain, 
Success rate in the UK also sitting far in the, in the 90%. I mean, come on now. That's why the market is not even interested in reporting these things about COVID. Because the market is literally fatigued about hearing about COVID. It's only governments that are talking the story. They, they, they want that. They are power-hungry bastards. They just want to control people. That's it. People die all the time. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't cheat death. With the success rate so high, people, sh we should have been without the mask. But every time we need to go out to the streets, I don't actually wear my mask. I only wear it when I go into a shop. That's it. But honestly, it's irritating because every time you need to look for the stupid mask. But one thing I can say, the market is literally no longer concentrating on this new infection scam of COVID. They rather look at the death rate. If the death rate was a concern, then the market would have gone in, into a panic. But I think personally, the market really doesn't care about the new COVID cases that are erupting. I will just take a short break and then I will explain more about the second wave in South Africa and also across the world. The champ is here! The champ is here! motion they're out making money and getting promotions saying all the right things pulling all the right levers will i sit here write my future self love letters who's winning is this the end or beginning because i'm starting to feel like reality's slipping and bank accounts they aren't very forgiving and life on edge feels like falling not living if effort brings victory what am i missing Nothing good comes easy when we have to, we push through not knowing completely you're here cause you're made for this next level, taking these places that most people won't start embracing it. Who cares what they do, they're not you. You'll go through more now than you think you're supposed to, but that shows you can cope with the highs and the lows cause you rose to be more. Could've run away, could've avoided the thorns, could've been comfortable. Blood, sweat, and tears, they're expendable. No more pretending, man, build something memorable. Don't drink from their copper, by stories they tell cause when all their time's up, you'll have up your own well you did it use lifelines you're topped off for a lifetime so drop all those one-liners we'll get them next time no this time is your time and whatever you decide will end up being real life no stop signs your storylines this whole thing is a misunderstanding a miscalculation jumped and missed the landing i'm mystified i can waste so much time these ovations are strictly imagination not standing so much for planning guess fate left without me those failure statistics yeah they'll be about me was Overly optimistic, forgot the logistics, guess we all learn sometime, don't we? Good is not good enough, no. How long do I stay down before I let go? I buried my pride and took it inside, but never enough. It takes a toll, it gets old, getting told you've got miles of road left to go. You're alone with this future unknown, just go home. Just go home, it's safe there. Yeah, I'll find some embrace there. Look, it's time to admit defeat. A humble retreat, check the box and complete to my core intrinsically. It's not for me, I can't do this. I knew this is how it would be. No fame, no fortune, no names on marquees. Just running in place every day on repeat. This is the world I want to see where everything's taken with no guarantees. No. Come on, man, pick your head off. Go back inside half a life learning to get up. How can I make you see that you have everything you need and what you want to be is never out of reach. Fate deceives sometimes, but destiny's calling, so can't let the phone ring. You know there's no all-knowing. Go level up, no letdowns. Let the world in, push fear out itself. Believe it starts right now. When hell freezes, you lay down. Until then, this is your town. It's your story, it's your crown. Live in the clouds, feet on the ground. They stand still, you run around. Go mesmerize, or they socialize. There's dollar signs to be maximized. If you live it right, regret nothing. Loud 
applause, the sweetest sound is this moment won't happen again and never becomes forever unless you choose to begin. So see greatness in each step and power and progress. Your future, yeah, that's limitless. It's infinite. Don't forget you want this. Getting your business funded is a lengthy process with the banks and it can take weeks before getting an answer. ProfitFX works with the best in the finance industry to bring you an unrivaled business funding solution for South African businesses. Our funding partners have funded millions in the last year in support of growing your business and our economy. Get in touch with your talk show host to request more information. A trade history of three years or more and an annual turnover of one million rand or more is required. Terms and conditions apply. Good afternoon and welcome to Boom Marcus Talk Show. This is your host, Ryan Hobson, and we're doing the second wave, which everybody in South Africa are panicking about. Uh, we are not sure we will see a December because we might be locked up um, um, December and it's summer. Just imagine, it's summer and and I'm dead sure they're going to come again with that crap rules of them. Um, you can't smoke, you can't drink. I mean, can you imagine that? No alcohol over a December, no cigarettes. Nothing. You just have to sit at home. It is like 30 degrees outside in South Africa. And you have to chill indoors. That that will be madness. I'm sure the people will be out of their minds. It, 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 I hope they don't do it. The, the economy can't afford it. Because they messed up in the first, in the, in, in the first round of, of COVID. I'm dead sure they're going to mess up again. We all know they mess up everything, everything. Where the companies, where is the hospitals, food parcels, just to dish out food parcels to people. They even mess up that. They stole people's food parcels. Yarr. These guys are just an absolute mess to be sitting with. And then they celebrate today's um, our Tambu, one of the, um, the people that, that passed away that were fighting for our freedom. And then these guys have the nerve of talking um, 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 at O.R. Tambo, um, who literally fought against the struggle of apartheid. I mean, these people need to embarrass themselves talking ab about uh, how they fought the apartheid. I mean, come on. Th there's different struggles that goes on. But, but anyway, you need to tune in for the mini budget uh, for today because that will be a very important part. But on the, on the market, I can tell you now that the market will not be concerned about COVID because the doctors around the world made some, got some amazing treatments out to treat, to treat the virus. So I don't think there's anything to worry about. That is now from the market standard standpoint. Unless politicians come again with a lockdown. But, but that, what, what we hope, honestly, is that Trump win the elections because if that idiot come in, and win the elections. Oh my God. He will panic immediately. He will panic. Joe Biden will mess up everything. Because he will lock up the economy again. That I can assure you. So the only thing that will literally move the market. Is the fact that. The victory between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. As things stands now. Things are not looking good for Trump. Because there's a voting via mail story that goes on. And I see Donald Trump is complaining about this whole story. But that is now on the, on the, uh, uh, um, that is now in favor of Joe Biden. That is what we think in favor of Joe Biden. So, um, because obviously the youth are very lazy, so they will do the mailing voting. And that is what we think it will be in favor of, of Joe Biden. On the other side also, because of this whole COVID train that they're jumping on, there's a whole bunch of youth and also the, the Black Lives Matter movement. It looks like people lost their brains when it gets to, to Black, Li Black Lives Matter movement, but um, that also fueled the people to go and register to vote. And then also the celebrities that goes in favor 
with um, with actually Joe Biden. It was always the case. Celebrities, especially black celebrities, um, go in favor with with the Democrats because the Democrats talks in favor of them. Emotional talks. Emotional talks doesn't mean shit. It's what you do at the end. Um, but that is that is what they they are they basing their votes on. As, here in South Africa is the same nonsense. Beautiful speeches, people talking spectacular English, and then everybody's mesmerized, like Barack Obama, mesmerized, and then everybody goes in favor with with that specific politicians because he's talking absolutely nothing, and 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 at the same time, he's talk, it, it sounds inspirational uh, for them, and that is where they vote. The guy did nothing, especially Barack Obama. Nothing for the black community. Here in South Africa, the ANC is useless here in South Africa. More people are in poverty, but they're blaming apartheid. Okay, that is for me the, actually the big story. But um, when, it gets to, when it gets to COVID, the market is not paying attention to that. The thing that the market do pay attention is actually the story regarding Joe Biden and Donald Trump, and that is the elections. If actually Joe Biden... Um, uh, win the elections, it will definitely create havoc to the market, and I did explain that in the previous podcast. If Trump wins, everything will be as normal as it is. Economy is open. I think the stimulus packages maybe will go through um, uh, to people, and I think personally, the economies will work as it is. But on the market side with COVID and the second wave, as things stands, I don't think Angela Merkel of Germany is in the mood to locking up the economy, nor Macron. It's only Spain that did it. Um, Italy, I don't think the far right is also in the mood to lock down the economy. The Russians also not. Uh, the Brazilians are, are, are actually doing well. With the COVID, COVID death rate is actually coming down quite nicely, and you see it's flattening as well. The market is really not paying attention to this whole second wave nonsense. The market is literally more concerned about who is winning the, the U.S. elections. And that is one thing that will, I will debate more intensely, not tomorrow, because tomorrow is also is, is this mini-budget that I need to examine and explain to you in South Africa. But after that, I will actually um, talk about the elections uh, of the United States because it will be on the 3rd of November. So that is where I will elaborate more on the, the U.S. elections because I think the market will move based on what is the possible outcomes of the U.S. elections. But on the new cases of COVID and the second wave, honestly speaking, the market don't pay attention to it. If it was a threat for people to die, a lot of them to die of COVID, then I would think, okay, the market would jump in here because everybody would be panicking. But in this instance, no, absolutely no. The market doesn't care about the second wave. The market is more worried about the U.S. elections and also the second wave. So that is it from my side for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoy today's trading. Please be careful because the market will have a lot of mood swings because of the, um, the polls that are coming out that shows that Joe Biden is actually in the lead to win the elections. So that is it from my side for today. Have a lovely Tuesday and then I will see you guys tomorrow with the mini budget of South Africa. Bye-bye. The champ is here! The champ is here!